Barry, welcome. <laughs> I'm applauding your footballing skills, but oh, I'm applauding it, Tisha. That's a magnificent effort this morning, superb. <laughs> Thank you. Now, that left foot of yours it was an absolute weapon. Was that ability of yours to hit a ball purely, was that completely natural? Um, a little bit, but repetition. Yeah. You know, uh, people think you can do things like that by just going out there on the, on the, in the back garden and just, you know, one-offs, but thousands and thousands of times that I've practiced that mm. and, you know, for moments like that, and, uh, you know, it pays off in the end. Yeah. Now, we know now that you're Watford Under-21 coach. How did that happen? Well, funnily enough, I um, finished my career in Australia and I have an academy out there that, you know, the, the problem with football, especially in Australia, is that everyone wants to play, you know, formation kind of work, especially in team, in team scenarios. Whereas, you got to get back to basics. Kids need to know how to actually pass a ball, strike a ball with their laces, volley the ball out. So, I kind of set up my own academy back in Australia and I kind of found, you know, I had, had a little bug for it. Mm. A bit like football. So I decided to do my badges and, you know, I wanted to see if that drive was still there, especially at a higher level. And my first assessment, I had to defend crosses, you know, and uh, <laughs> I, I was over there and... Is that strength of yours? Uh, well, I know how to deliver crosses, yeah. so I shouldn't know how to defend right, them, okay. right? Um, and that fire was in my belly, you know, pulling and, you know, telling everyone to get in the positions here, there, now. It, the, the fire was there. So... I knew something was there, so I've just kind of gone on from that and, and, and I've learnt. And then the opportunity was to come up and to, to work for Watford. And I, and, and I thought, well, it's a premiership club, you, you know, young, exciting manager. You know, I hear great things about the club, you know. I mean, for example, they've had 57 graduates that have come from the academy into wow, the first team. Important. So yeah. things like yeah. that, I was impressed with. And I'm all about player development as well. So it was a no-brainer for me. You know, to go down there, to be in an environment seven days a week and just to start learning my trade again. Because I, I kind of feel like I'm 12 years old again, you know, starting my career again. So it was an opportunity that I couldn't pass down and, and I'm absolutely loving it. You know, it, it's different. My voice is gone because I'm <laughs> shouting yeah. all the time now. Um, but again, it's something that I really love and I'd love to continue. Lee Bowyer. Yes. You've just brought Lee Bowyer on board. <laughs> Is that your doing? Because the last we heard, he was running a fishing lake in France. He was. I think he's been running fishing ever since he was young. I mean, right. even when we were at Leeds, he always tried to get me to go fishing. I don't... I mean, I can understand going marlin fishing, you know, or shark fishing or mm. something like that. But, you know, sitting around a lake, yeah. a dirty lake, at four o'clock in the morning. Dirty I don't know, it just doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> so I kind of, I've kind of brought him out and, you know, I always got on well with Bo. Uh, especially at Leeds, we kind of understood each other when we played. Uh, so for him, it was a no-brainer. Especially, you know, I've played. I'm not sitting here going that I know everything about football. You know, I know certain positions, and I wanted to bring someone in that understood, especially the the, the centre centre role. You know, especially going forward. And you know, I always say that there's only three players in the world that were excellent at running into a box where no one could pick them up. And Paul Scholes was one, Lee Bowie was another, and Tim Cahill was wow. one of them as well. So, for me, for him to come in and, and bring that experience to my boys... Did you have to is, convince him to come back? I had to make a few phone calls, because yeah. like I said, he was fishing. You know, <laughs> yeah. He loves it. Yeah. Um, but no, he's, uh, he's done his badges and, you know, it took, a, it took a couple of phone calls, but then, like, first time he got in there, like I said, you could see his kind of, you know his drive as well. Mm. But he's a little bit quieter now, you know, um, but he needs to be a little bit more vocal. That's the only thing I can say to him. And you've just beaten Leeds. I, uh, you know, you've just... Your team's just beaten Leeds 1-0 and you complained about how physical Leeds were. <laughs> oh, the irony! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I mean, like, first half, you know, and especially is as well as my um, old manager, Paul Hart, you know, the one that coached me, so... I was nervous, you know, especially... And, and, and they did... And it was... Um, First half, we did well. We played. You know, we, we got the goal and we kind of controlled the game. I'm sure if Paul Hart was sitting right next to me, he'd be saying it's a load of rubbish. Um, but then second half, they kind of turned it around. It was the old-fashioned kind of leads, you know, get in, stuck in, you know, to see what they're made of. And, you know, I was proud of my boys because they need to understand that sometimes football is not about passing. You know, it's about actually putting the ball away and just standing up and being a man and fighting. When you've when you got a, a coaching job, management job, out of all the brilliant managers you played under, was there anyone that you picked the phone up to and had a chat? No, no, I haven't picked the phone up yet. Um, probably won't answer my calls at the moment. <laughs> um, but no, it's uh, 
Is that something... because you want to have a go at on your, on your yeah, own first? Yeah, I, I think you've got to bring something different, you know, to, to football. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a, as a player, you know, if you want to get noticed, you've got to think outside the box. <laughs> and I think, I think the same as a manager, you know, the basics are there, but you've got to bring something different mm -hmm. to be noticed. And, you know, you look at the great managers of the world, Ferguson brings something different, Wenger brings something different, Mourinho's brought something different, and now the new managers are coming up. And I think you can't stick with the same old stuff because people find you out. So you've got to actually bring something different. So... It's a great opportunity for me because it's all about player development at, you know, at this level. So I can try things, you know, and if they don't work off, I'm not going to get crucified. You know, it's going to be, well, I won't try that again. But it's a good opportunity if things do come up where well, I can think, well, opportunity for me to actually keep that in the locker for other games. And do you do your own demos? Do I? Well, I always say don't do things that you can't do yourself. You know, whether that's running drills, physical work, or actually football stuff. So, yes, to a point, yeah. because they are getting stronger. I mean, I actually lost my first challenge the other day, and I actually looked and I thought, I'm actually getting old now. Oh. You know, but I am continually challenging 20-year-olds and 19-year-olds, so there's a little bit of leeway there. you still got it, though, yeah? I think I have. Yeah. Yeah. That's the word. That's the word. That's the word. Harry yeah. Kewell, everyone. So